much rather stay in London and see the war. This war is going to be very nasty, Edmund, which is why we're all being sent away. Spoil sports, grown-ups. They are doing it for our sake, Edmund. When the bombs start falling on London... I wish Mother and Nanny could have come with us. I don't think it's fair. They'll be right there, in all the excitement. What that danger you mean? Don't talk such tosh. We are lucky, Edmund. We are going away deep into the countryside where we'll be safe. Yes, and you know why we'll be safe? Because in the country, nothing ever happens. <laughs> Now the servants will take these. That is their function. One must not deprive people of their function. Everyone has their part to play. Oh. Children. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. sir. Oh, yes. Welcome. Welcome to my home, which you must feel is your home as long as you stay here with me. Thank you, sir. Well, it's wartime, I suppose. Even I must make a pretense at military precision. Right. Form a straight line there. Very good. Number. From the right. Name? Peter, sir. Susan, sir. I'm Lucy. You have a name too, I trust? Edmund. Sir. Sir. I shall try not to mix you up. Oh, uh, Mrs. McCready. Yes, Professor. These children have had a long journey. Have their supper served upstairs in their own study. They don't want to sit up and be polite to an old man. Well, I'm sure it would be an inconvenience for the kitchen staff. Oh, how grand that sounds. But these are the kitchen staff. Indeed, all the staff. What do you think? Whatever you say, Professor, your word is law. Is it? How oh, nice. I say, what about the old prof? Trying to be military? He's <laughs> lovely. He's peculiar. Why? Because he's nice. The way he talks. I keep wanting to laugh. Very bad form, Edmund. He's given us a home. I know you don't have to keep on about it. I wouldn't it. go on about please, it if you want. Please don't fight. Someone will hear. I shouldn't think so. It's miles from here down to the drawing room. It's the biggest, weirdest house we've ever been in. All those stairs and passages. I think it's spooky, especially now that it's dark. I think that's the only good thing about the whole business. 
I like this spooky house. I'm sure there are ghosts in every corner. Edmund. What was that? Only an owl. We never heard owls in London. I wonder what other things we'll find here. Hawks. Eagles. Badgers. I'd love to see a badger. I wonder if there are stags. Well, we'll soon know. We've weeks and weeks of holidays ahead. We can start by exploring the grounds and the woods and the fields and everything tomorrow. It would rain, wouldn't it? We can still explore. We'll explore the house. Yes. Every nook and cranny. Excuse me. Goodness gracious me. Are you a fawn? Yes. Yes, I suppose I am. Thank you. Should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? My name is Lucy. But are you... Uh, forgive me. Are you what they call a girl? Of course I'm a girl. A human? Yes. Girls are human. Well, well, this is delightful. Delightful. 
I've never seen a human before. Let me introduce myself. My name is Tumnus, and... How did you get into Narnia? Narnia? What's that? Why, it's where we are. This is the land of Narnia. All that lies between the lamppost and the great castle of Caer Paravel on the Eastern Sea. The castle of what? Caer Paravel. I don't think you should worry. There's only one of you. And you. You've come from the wild woods of the West. No. I got in through the wardrobe in the spare room. Oh, dear. If only I'd worked harder at geography when I was a little fawn at school. You'll think me very ignorant, but I've never heard of the city of Wardrobe, nor the land of Spare Oom. It's just back there, I think. It's summer there. And winter here. It's been winter in Narnia for ever so long. And we shall both catch cold if we stand here talking in the snow. Oh, daughter of Eve, from the far land of Spare Oom, where eternal summer reigns around the bright city of Wardrobe, <laughs> how would it be if you came and had tea with me? I've never taken tea with the form before. Well, then. Really, I suppose I should be getting back. But it's just round the corner, and there'll be toast and sardines. And cake. Not long now. Make yourself at home. house and that really is a wonderful tea. Do sit, do sit. One for me and one for a friend. Mr. Tumnus. Life was beautiful here once. Midnight dances in the forest. The nymphs who live in the wells and the dryads who live in the trees would come and dance with us, with the fauns. Oh, and the feasting and the treasure hunting and the summers. Long, long summers when the woods were green and the whole forest given up to jollification for weeks on end. But why isn't it like that now? Now it is winter. Endless winter. And always will be, unless... and until...
have I been asleep? I must go home. The others will be wondering what's happened to me. <gasps> Mr. Tumnus, whatever is the matter? Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Don't. Please. What is it? Do tell me. <laughs> Mr. Tumnus, do stop it at once. My old father would never have done a thing like this. I am, you see, I'm a very bad fawn. I don't think you're a bad fawn. I think you're a very good fawn. You're the nicest fawn I've ever met. You wouldn't say that if you knew. I've done a very bad thing. I've taken service under the White Witch. That's how bad I am. I'm in the pay of the White Witch. The White Witch? Who is she? Who? Why, it's she who has all Narnia under her thumb, under her spell. It's she who makes it always winter here. Always winter, never Christmas. Think of that. How awful. But what does she pay you for? I'm a kidnapper. <laughs> Would you believe that I'm the kind of fawn to meet a poor, innocent human child in the wood, pretend to be friendly with it, and invite it home to my cave, all for the sake of lulling it to sleep and handing it over to the white witch? Oh, I'm sure you wouldn't do anything of the... Yes, you were the child. I had orders from the White Witch that if ever I saw a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve in the wood, I was to catch them and spell them with my flute and make them sleep and hand them over to her. But you haven't. You've told me. But if I don't, she's sure to find out. She'll have my tail cut off and my horns sawn off and my beard plucked out. And if she's extra and specially angry with me, she'll turn me into stone. I'm sorry. I am sorry. But please let me go home. Of course I will. I must. I see that now. I hadn't known what humans were like before I met you. Now that I know you, of course I can't give you up to the witch. But we must be off at once. I'll see you back to the lamppost. I hope you can find your own way from there, back to uh, spare oom and, uh, what was it, a wardrobe? I think I can. go very quietly. The whole wood is full of her spies. Even some of the trees are on her side. Come. Daughter of Eve, are you sure you know your way from here? I can see the wardrobe door. Then be off home as quick as you can. And can you ever forgive me for what I was going to do? Yes, I can. You won't get into trouble on my account. No, no, certainly not. Farewell, daughter of Eve. Oh, may I keep the handkerchief? Of course. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> I didn't know one even oh. noticed. <laughs> I've been away hours. Batty, quite batty. But it was just after breakfast when I went into the wardrobe. I was there hours and had tea and... Don't 
Don't be sorts silly, Lucy. We've only just come out of that room a moment ago. You can't have been in there more than a few seconds. She's just making up the story for fun, aren't you, Lou? No, I'm not. It's magic. It's a magic wardrobe. There's a wood inside it, and it's snowing, and there's a form that I had tea with, and a witch, and the place is called Narnia. Come and see. I had tea with a what? Let's have a look. Now, go in and see for yourselves. Lucy, it's just an ordinary wardrobe. Perfectly ordinary. I could see the back of it. Jolly good hoax, Lucy. <laughs> you really took us in for a moment. <laughs> it's not the hoax! It looked different a moment ago. Honestly. Come on, Lou. You've had your joke. Don't you better drop it now. It was all a story. You know I don't lie. I never lie. It would be the easiest thing in the world to say I'd made it all up. But I didn't. So I shan't. Found your new countries in the cupboard lately. Edmund! Let's play hide and seek. Susan, you're it. Why me? Because I'm the eldest, and I say so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Susan come to find you. It's me, Edmund. Lucy? Where are you? I know you're in here somewhere.
I didn't believe you. Packs! Just like a girl. Sulking. Won't accept a fellow's apology. 